Last time on Cycling Demystified. We were all so gullible. Oh. <laughs> if somebody offered us sweets from their car, we would go with them. <laughs> like, I'll take the sweets, but I'm not getting in your car, you weird, weird old man. And now, the conclusion. All right, Ev. My turn. Your, yeah, your turn. My turn. turn. All, right. All right. All right. Okay, so yeah. five tips with related to mechanical stuff, yeah. maintenance well, and things like would that. Would you change anything? Would you change anything? Yeah. Your gearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so one. number one, number one. Okay. Like a lot of people, like for example, the ultra distance lot who are going to mm. be doing this probably won't need to change their gearing because they're probably already going to have pretty low, low gearing, gearing yeah because if you're mm. doing ultra distance yeah it's not all about speed yeah. in fact it's very little about speed yeah. it's mostly about mm. surviving yeah. it's about survival and that means if you have been going for six hours eight hours mm. and then suddenly there's like a little kick up <laughs> yeah you just granny gear it just like get in your easy yeah. just like give yourself a rest yeah. you know you don't want to Ever, you don't want to run out of gears. Yeah, That's yeah. what they say, what I say, what they say. What I say is <laughs> always have an easier gear than you think you're ever going to need. Mm. Because not only is that good, because if you get somewhere, whereas all of a sudden you're just, you hit a brick wall and you just yeah. need, you need the easiest gear. Yeah. There's that. But also, generally, genu generally when you're riding, if you are always not quite in your easiest gear, mm. it gives you a psychological boost, a bit of an advantage. You can always look down and go, oh, I've, still, I've got more, I've got, I've got extra, I've got some leeway, you know? Um, and that helps psychologically, especially when you're doing long climbs. It's really nice to know that you haven't run out yeah. of gears. You've just know? got that extra. It's yeah, like a it's just like a little safety net, backup, yeah. you know? And that doesn't mean you should never use it, Yeah, but it's it's there to use if you need to use it, but it's nice also to yeah. know that you haven't hit the limit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's good. And then in terms of if you do need to change your gearing, cassette is usually the first thing. Yeah. You know, people want to get a bigger cassette, but um, and what most people will always go to the cassette. Yeah. And they think, oh, I'll just get a bigger cassette, but stop, because actually probably easier to change to smaller chain rings at the front oh, it's actually easier and yeah. cheaper most yeah. of the time it might be cheaper mm. um some of the time you might not even need to get a new chain because a lot of the time if you change your gearing right uh, if you change to bigger gearing easier yeah. gearing um your chain might need to be yeah. a little bit longer mm. um but you can do things like you can make your if you've got like a double at the front mm. Um, you can make your small ring a little bit smaller. Mm. Sometimes you can't go too too much of a difference between yeah. the big and the small, but sometimes you can afford to make it a little bit smaller, or you can just change both the front rings. Or if you've got a single ring up front, again, you, that's the easiest yeah. thing in the world because you can just get a smaller yeah, one, yeah. pop that on. Um, it's easier than worrying about the, mm. the cassette and the capacity of the rear yeah. mech and all that stuff and, and chain yeah. length and stuff like that. So easier to change the front. But... Um, I guess, is, you know. it, is it true that then, so if you change a chain ring, the relative change of, you know, going to a smaller chain ring is greater than, say, a changing cassette? Uh, um, oh, it depends what depends. size. On yeah, the, it depends the on whether you're mullet or the other way around oh, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But um, you can, there are, there are loads of gear calculators on the mm. internet and you can just go and put in your, you know, you can do it in gear inches if you're a, if you're yeah. a nerd, or you if you're a, a red, genuine, mm. regular human being, you can just look at cadence versus speed. Yeah. You can just say, okay, look, yeah. I'm probably my average speed is this. This is yeah. my most comfortable cadence. Yeah. You pop those two in, you, and you can look yeah. at a chart and say, okay, if I've got this these gears, this yeah. range of gearing, then my my f like I can be in the you know if I'm going the fastest I'm ever going to mm. go, not including descending, because you're not yeah. pedaling when you're descending, you're just enjoying the ride. It's like a roller coaster. But um, you, can, you can see based on your cadence, because that's, that's the mm. metric that I always use yeah. when I'm deciding on what gears to use. Yeah. And it's like, what's my average cadence? What, my, what are my comfortable cadence ranges? Yeah. Mm. And, mm. Um, and what gears allow me to yeah. use them? Like, yeah, you yeah. know, there's no point 
having a massive gear yeah. if you'll never use it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and you, you see that with um, riders who aren't used to riding hills and they'll yeah. just stay in that same gear and just yeah. mash. And they'll just gear. grind and grind and grind. And obviously, you know, if you're grinding, if you're, if you're trying to, if you're doing a really, really high power, high torque, yeah. low cadence, yeah. you're screwing just, up your yeah, drivetrain yeah. yeah. as well. It's not supposed to be ridden like that. Yeah. It's yeah. your chain is going to stretch more prematurely. Your chain yeah. rings are going to wear out more prematurely. All of that. Yeah. So, you know, and higher cadence. <laughs> and your knees, obviously yeah. your knees. Yeah. And your ankles mm. and your brain and mm. everything. Oh, I had to, just had a thought uh, thinking about cadence and mm. so on. Um, I wonder if going to a shorter crank length would actually be more beneficial for climbing. A bit like... Um, that was my next tip, way. You're yeah. just stepping on my toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds thinking alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, short, this is the thing about shorter cranks, right? Mm. Not only do they benefit you probably your your form your knees your hips yeah. and all that kind of stuff yeah. but they will probably benefit your uh drivetrain longevity mm. because you mm. will tend towards a higher cadence yeah yeah, yeah. so there you go yeah all there's so, so, so many good things so yeah. uh, because it's shorter crank you can lean forward more easily yeah. not impact uh kind of hip angle yeah. as much uh yeah you can spin that slightly higher cadence at a certain gear so you can maintain the same yeah. cadence that you want to. Technically, your center of gravity is yeah, a little like bit more just, compact. And your yeah. feet being uh, not as far apart when you're at mm. sort of like, yeah, you yeah. know, especially when you're descending Three, six, and four. you're having to move, the, yeah. move your feet around to get your balance yeah. and, and to make sure that you're, um, you're weighting the right side of the bike or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah so many. So yeah. many pluses. Crank length could be in it, but I guess it's a bigger change for. It's a much a bigger change. It's more expensive more change. It's a bigger change. Yeah. But again, you know, if if but if if you if you're going for a big event or something like that, and then you think, well, you know what? If I'm going to do that, may yeah. as well yeah. go for a bike fit and do everything, yeah. and then like you know, get everything as good as you can get it. Yeah. It's not, yeah. you know, you might spend a little bit, you might spend more money in the short term, yeah. but yeah, yeah. this is a bike you're going to be riding for years. Yeah. So yeah. how, you know, yeah. what's it worth to you? For your knees not to go in 10, 15 years, <laughs> you know? There we go. So crank length. Was that tip two? Uh, tip two, yeah. Let's tip call two. it tip two. Let's call it tip two. All right, tip three. Yeah. Um, you're talking about descending. Yeah. And being able to reach your brakes. brakes. Yeah. Right? So... Well, every like how, from how one from one model to the next of yeah. even from the same manufacturer, they put they they're putting these adjustment screws in different places. Mm -hmm. Some of them are you have to take the hood, uh, the top of the hood off the top of the lever, and yeah. there's a usually like a little Allen key. It's like a two mil, two point five mil yeah. Allen key somewhere in there. And if you uh, if you tighten it, if you clockwise, yeah. it will bring your your lever closer Close. to the bar. So just yeah. general rule of thumb, stick your hands in the hooks yeah. of the drops. Yeah. And can you, can you, with one thing, with your index finger, can you grab your brake levers and pull them in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually have the leverage to be able to use them? Yeah. If you can't, yeah. if you'd have to go back to your tops yeah. or you'd have to stretch like tons, then mm -hmm. you know they need to be closer in. Yeah. And most of them mm. nowadays yeah. do have adjustment. Yeah. I think no, nobody gets told that brake levers have this reach or position or adjustment. There's nobody, yeah, nobody advertises yeah. it. It's, yeah. uh, you, you have to Google it and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you have to figure out, like some, yeah, sometimes the Allen key is like just at the bottom underneath the <laughs> yeah. hood, yeah. like just where the lever comes out. Um, and other times it's in the top and other times it's, it's somewhere else in the back. The side, and then, yeah. yeah, the old ones, the really old ones, you used yeah. to have to put shims in yeah, the top right. to, yeah, to yeah. get them to be closer but yeah there's usually some kind of adjustment yeah, yeah. and um yeah. so yeah you'll you'll have seek to work it out, it out. Seek, seek it out, out. Yeah, and, and make sure that you know everything is um yeah hunky dory yeah. yeah your hands can be comfortable you can yeah. reach the brake levers it's amazing yeah. how many people can't mm. and but don't know because there's no yeah. there's no reason to know nobody they, yeah. no new bike no new bike not a single one comes with an instructional manual that yeah. tells you yeah. how to do these things. Yeah. Usually because bike manufacturers sell 
their same bikes with loads of different yeah different group sets different brake brake levers mm. so they can't they just won't won't have that info yeah. so yeah search around like you know mm. or that ask that should be another podcast we do like, yeah you know how how to actually how to figure out <laughs> yeah. where the bolts are yeah where do i stick my allen key yeah. that can be the title how to how to learn about your bike yeah. what it can actually do for you yeah. all that stuff you never knew there are there? there are so many adjustments that people yeah. like the right the base level mm. is most people won't even realize that you can change your stem mm. length or your bars or move your yeah. levers on the bars like most people just won't know that yeah. you know and it's only when they come for a bike fit or they go to a mechanic yeah something you know that they discover that you yeah know? so that's quite yeah the amount of people that when we make that change they go Oh, didn't know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't need <laughs> a whole new thing. bike. No, you just needed like two millimeter change to your yeah. levers. So yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that reach adjustment is is possible in possible. pretty much every yeah, every bike that's sold. Well, definitely every bike that's sold now, but yeah. every bike yeah. from the last twenty years. Yeah. Don't probably know about has. micro shift, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Shimano SRAM. Shimano SRAM definitely. Campag. Even Who knows if Campag? <laughs> you probably have to write an email to Italy, yeah. <laughs> requesting I, I a change of, yeah. of and, they, and they come back to you like, no, why, why you don't like what we do? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm gonna get it in the neck, but it Campag gonna come down on yeah. you, close you down. <sighs> um, okay. Tip okay. Number, what uh, was your tip number four? Because I'll relate it back to that. My tip number so four got down. was, uh, let me think, it was about, that was the brakes, yeah, reaching, being able to reach brakes. Oh, okay. What was your tip uh, number five? Moving, I talked about moving the saddle forward and tipping ah, okay. it down. Okay, this one, this is, this one is for my, in, in, in honour of my other half, yeah. Jenny, because um, <laughs> from London Bike Kitchen, because um, when you, if you, as the rider, mm. uh, attempt to make these small changes to your bicycle <laughs> in preparation for your uh, extreme event. Um, learn how to use tools. Mm. Like this is uh, seat posts, particularly saddle rail. Like moving yeah. your saddle about. There's normally you've got first. You've got to figure out what kind of seat post do I have. How do I undo it? Has it got one bolt on it, or two mm. bolts, or many bolts, yeah. or some other kind of thumb wheel, or some kind of torture device, or whatever? And you have to figure out what size of Allen key that you need. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out where. You have to figure out if you have two bolts, which one do you loosen first? Mm. If you've got two bolt saddle uh, uh, seat posts like the Thompson one or some others, yeah. where you have one at the front of the yeah. post and one at the back of the post, you loosen the one at the back yeah. so that you've got, so it's loose, and yeah. then you use the front one to adjust the tilt, yeah. right? Or sometimes it's a thumb wheel that yeah. you have to reach underneath. Yeah. Sometimes if you've got a cutout in your saddle, it's easier. Yeah. You can hear Matt, like, <laughs> he's going out of the room because he's, yeah. he's thinking of the NV seat post. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, find out. Find out, like, what yeah. have you got? How do you adjust it? How tight does it need to be? Some of mm. these seat posts with a single bolt, they need to be cranked up quite tight. Yeah. Um, if you're not sure, go to your local bike shop yeah. and ask them. They'll have a torque wrench as well, so they can make sure that they tighten it to, to enough torque that it's not going to slip. Yeah. It's not going to move, because yeah. that's obviously, you don't want that. Mm. But if you're going to do it yourself, you've got a decent, make sure you've got a fairly decent set of allen keys yeah. right you don't want something that's all rounded off and, yeah. and, cra and scrappy and soft and you want to make sure that when you use these tools yeah. that they're fully engaged in the hole yeah, yeah like put it in and before you start <laughs> cranking it with all your strength make sure it's fully engaged yeah. like wiggle it back and yeah. forth is it the right size yeah. it'll have a little bit of play in it, but not too much. And like, you know, when you start to yeah. apply force to it, whether you're undoing it or whether you're tightening it, is it moving a lot or is your tool just moving and rounding yeah, off yeah. the bolt and then, you're, and then you're screwed? Then you have to yeah, go yeah. to your bike shop anyway and, and find well, a replacement. This goes back to our earlier point of being prepared. Yeah, it? You of course. Know, do, do this stuff beforehand. Oh yeah, yeah, don't do it not, on the day. On the day. Don't do it on the, the morning. 
<laughs> there are people do it. There are, yeah, oh, of course. Definitely. Um, definitely. Ride London Day, the morning of Ride London, you, you just hear of so many people yeah. that try to adjust their, yeah. their saddle. Yeah. Don't be that person, guys. Don't be that person be who's that like, service, service. Yeah. <laughs> um, but stuff like that, you know, just like learning. Mm. If you want to adjust something, figure it out in advance. Learn how to do it. Because if you practice doing it and you do it plenty, being able to change stuff if something does slip while mm. you're on your, yeah. in, in your, in the midst of your event, yeah. that knowing that you know which tool to use, you know yeah. where to put it, you know yeah. how much to, you know how much to tighten it and whatever, and you know how to adjust things, yeah. it's all very useful. Good stuff. Tidbits of information. All right. Pretty good. Um, I got, I got, I got, One a, more. I got a five B. Five B. Yeah, tire pressure. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was wondering pressure. when you're going to get onto like yeah. wheels and tires um, and stuff like that. This, will, this is all dependent on the, um, the road surface, of course. Yeah. But uh, at the moment, there's a slightly disingenuous trend towards lower tire pressures. Mm. Um, lots of people will sort of say, oh, lower is faster, lower is better, lower is more comfortable, lower is this, lower is that. Um, you might want to up your tire pressures if you run very low pressures mm. if you're climbing because mm. when they're really soft yeah. you are gonna bounce yeah, yeah. when you're climbing and you, that's just you're just losing your all your power is going through your feet through your legs through your cranks and just yeah farting out the <laughs> the bottom of your bike yeah so like you i'm not talking about rock hard i'm not talking about like mm. old school like 120 psi kind of thing but mm. you know experiment experiment yeah. before you um maybe just up it yeah. a little bit more than you normally put it. Yeah. maybe you want to uh, adjust front and rear yeah you might want a little bit more in your rear mm -hmm. so that you get better tra yeah. power transfer as you're climbing yeah depends on your tire brand and all yeah. these things, obviously, but experiment. Mm. Don't be afraid to experiment. It makes sense, though. You, you're generally traveling at a slower speed mm. than you would do. And so the aim of a lower tire pressure is to absorb the bumps and yeah. shock that you normally feel on the road. But because you're going uh, slower, you yeah. just you, you can A, avoid some of the wor yeah. worst bits of road. Yeah. But also, you're just not going to hit the, the kind of potholes yeah, at exactly. the same speed. So. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, if there are holes, mm. yeah, you're not going to want to go too high on the tire pressure. But yeah. Yeah, when it, when you're climbing, you know, the idea of pneumatic tires is that they compress at the front and then they release when they're unweighted at the back. It mm. helps you having a little bit more pressure. It actually yeah, helps yeah. to drive your your bike yeah. forward. So, and bear in mind when you're doing events, especially these guys are doing this this Everesting. Yeah. You know, you can up your tire pressure a bit at the bottom. Yeah. You can get to the top and you can let a little bit out if you want yeah. before you descend. If there's yeah. if it's really bumpy or something, there's yeah. no reason you can stop any time. You've got a yeah. pump, you can pump a little bit more, you can experiment. Cool. Have fun with it. All right. Sounds pretty good. Any uh, advice around wheels or do you want to get really geeky about spoke tension? No, yeah. spoke tension, you don't change your spoke tension. That's not how you build wheels. Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not what happens. Yeah. Um, don't touch your spoke tension. Yeah. Okay. Um, just maybe, uh, maybe make sure that the, your spoke tension is good, yeah. is even. True your wheels. Uh, true, yeah. You know, if, if your ne wheels need truing, if you know an experienced wheel builder, then they the, that's the people to ask yeah. about that. Uh, your average mechanics, they'll be able to true your wheels, but not necessarily, yeah. they won't necessarily check your, your tension evenness or anything like that. Um, if your wheels are going well and they're still true, don't worry about it. Cool. Too much of a minefield to go into. It's an yeah. entire podcast. Yeah. All right. Enough about butts. I think that's pretty good. So we've got five tips from a bike fitter, five tips from a mechanic. Mm -hmm. That should uh, give you some food for thought. Chew on that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if you're going away to do some climbing this summer, uh, get your position sorted beforehand. Mm, test absolutely. it. Test it. Yeah. Get service before you're going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Be like if there's something wrong, yeah. just get a tune up, even a tune up. If it's uh, just you make yeah. sure your gears are shifting right, make sure your brakes are working properly. Good stuff. And if you uh, want to support the Ultra Distance Scholarship and all the guys who are beasting up and down this hill, and I think some of them are going to be doing it online on Zwift or kind of in their local area too. 
then yeah, go check out the Ultra Distance Scholarship. Um, we'll drop a link to the fundraising page. Um, I think they've got a target of around about seven and a half grand they want to raise cool. uh, towards the, the scholarship. So anything you can give would be a really amazing. Um, your support is greatly appreciated. Do it. And yeah, if you want to follow them along, yeah, go check out the Ultra Distance Scholarship. And um, yeah, let us know how you go. Nice. Right. Um, Let's wrap it up. Yeah, that's it. Have fun, guys, climbing up and down. Enjoy your riding. Yeah, all right. See you next time. Bye, bye Here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell all your friends about me. At Cycling Demystified on Instagram. Tell everyone. And leave us a review on your podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, whatever. That would help us out a lot. Suffering from numb hands, tingling toes, and any other persistent discomforts when you ride? These are all signs that your bike fit could be improved. If you're bike fit curious, get in touch with Way or Matt by emailing info at foundation.fit or finding them on Instagram at fdn underscore bike fit. Finally, for all your bike servicing needs, custom dream bike or hand-built wheels, go to www.frequencycycleworks.com or find me on Instagram at frequencycycleworks. Until next time.